All right, hey folks, welcome back. We're doing a video on red dots. It's gonna be awesome. So you can go ahead and hit subscribe and hit the notifications bell and like and comment. And some of you are like, hey, I'm new to this channel. I don't know you, bro. And so you're like on the fence, but today's a good day to just kind of be benevolent. Why don't you just trust and be like, boom, I'm hitting it. And then you uh, go ahead and comment, yay for that. Uh, so uh, yeah, yay for that. Anyway, if you haven't already checked out my video on the pros and cons of uh, pistol optics, you should go ahead and check that out. There's a lot of reasons why you should not put red dots on. So if you are Johnny Go Quickly Troll, already at the ready typing out, hey, red dots are a terrible idea because of X, Y, Z, I already know. I know why it's a bad idea. And so what I don't want you to do is go out, replicate this setup or something like it, and then you end up despising it for you know, just different reasons that you'll uh, come upon. So I want you to go through with your eyes wide open. There's also some really good pros. This is my everyday carry gun. This is what I carry. And I've got good reasons for uh, why, and uh, I know the cons. So uh, anyway, check that video out. I'll put a link below in the description and maybe up here if uh, the uh, video platform allows me to do that. So uh, jumping right in, uh, here we go. What type should you get? There is adjustable LED. So it's LED only, it's battery life, no tritium, that's one. Second one is a tritium dot, and the third one is a dual, and that takes the best of tritium and LED and puts it together. I know what you're thinking of like, ooh, I want the dual. And that almost got me too, but you don't want that, that's not what I recommend. I say go adjustable LED only. It is cool, it makes sense of, man, if I go tritium, I don't have to replace batteries. But the, uh, what happens, and I, I found this out early when I had a SWAT team that was running just different optics that was had specifically had the dual illumination, and in certain lighting conditions, it couldn't really distinguish what level to put it at, and it was washed out, and at like one of the different stages we had set up for the team, everyone tanked on that place in the shadows. I don't remember exactly what the lighting conditions was, but they couldn't pick up their dot, and it was devastating. That really sucked. So in some lighting conditions, that really sucks. So what I want you to do is get adjustable LED only. Now, when it comes to battery life, these batteries will last like a year or two left on. That's awesome. So replace them every once in a while. I've never actually, no, I've replaced this battery one time and I've been carrying it a long time. It's always on, it's on right now. There it is, hey princess. Anyway, so uh, on and at the ready. Adjustable LED only is what I want. Uh, when it, uh, it starts getting dark at night or I go into a movie theater or something, here's my down switch and I'll just go ahead and tap that one or two times depending on the darkness. And if I'm about to go out in brilliant sun, I just come through and I can do it through my garment real discreet and I'll go pop, pop and dial it up so it's nice and bright so it doesn't get washed out by the sun. So that's the only real maintenance where I have to do the adjustment, but adjustable LED only. Uh, let's see, the next thing, what size dot? Get a three and a quarter MOA dot. Three and a quarter, that's a tiny dot. People ask me this all the time. Hey, what about the six MOA dot? And the idea is, is a bigger dot, I'll be able to pick up a little bit quicker. And that's just not the case. You're not, I'm not seeing a six MOA dot quicker. The idea is, is it centered in the glass? And then you got a big dot or a smaller dot. The bigger dot isn't helping me identify or um, isn't helping me acquire and engage targets any faster. All it does is it mucks up my ability to really take a precision shot at distance. If you get a three and a quarter MOA dot and you wish you had a six, it's really easy. Take the uh, take the button on the side and just dial it up a little bit hotter so then the little dot is glowing brighter and now it looks like a 6 MOA dot. With the 3 and a quarter, I can do what the 6 MOA dot does, but the 6 MOA can't give me what the 3 does. There's also a 1 MOA dot. I just haven't played around a lot with it, but I'd go 1 MOA before I went 6. But let's just say 3 and a quarter works really well. Get that dot size. Uh, the next thing is how do you mount it? One, the simplest, cheapest option is to get a Glock MOS, and that means the slide is already cut. So instead of having to buy a gun for 500 something bucks and then go ahead and have this, uh, the slide milled out so that you can put a uh, red dot optic on top of it, uh, that's a bunch of extra money and waiting time. Some of them do it for a couple hundred bucks, so that's good, and some of them are really, really expensive. So uh, my, my friends at Unity Tactical, they have a really expensive one, but it's like a dovetail mount and it's like just awesome. Uh, but it's really expensive. Uh, here, here's one that's been milled. This is a gun by Trident Defense, and it is all kinds of sexy. Look at this thing. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, party on. 
So uh, anyway, but they have milled it out specifically and uh, works really good. Now, if you're going to do an MOS, it's special mounting hardware. So there's a plate here underneath, and then there's a secondary real thin plate here. Then you got to make sure you blue lock tight the screws. And as long as you have both of those plates in and you put your screws in, I've never had any issue. The only time I see these flying off is when you don't use both of the plates or you do something wrong and install. I've had these screws back out uh, once or twice. Uh, a couple times in the last year and you just watch them and then blue lock tight every once in a while uh, if you need to freshen it up but man these haven't backed out in a long time so uh, it is a little cantankerous and we'll put it in the cons area some of you iron sight folks are listening in and you're being like dude what's the trouble just get iron sights and go for it i'm like dude the ability to threat focus when clearing in and around structures is a real big deal to me and it's worth fiddling around with screws and loctite and mounting plates and for me, it's worth the hassle. For you, it may not be, and we'll just agree to disagree, and I'll be cool with you, bro. Uh, let's see. Uh, so uh, the idea is MOS or a milled slide. Do whatever you want, but for the real cheap, economical, simple button, I just go ahead and go a Glock MOS. Hey guys, just, uh, links will be below in the description, so if you're interested in an RMR, uh, or some other type of optic that I'll mention below in the description along with the mounting hardware, some sights, some other accessories, amenities, and you'll be able to uh, party like it's 1999. Uh, let's see, the other thing is which type should you buy? And I'm not gonna speak too much of this because I really just wanna speak from personal experience because it's my reputation on the line. And if I say something and you buy it and then it craps the bed, well, now I've violated the sacred trust. So uh, for me, of, I'll vouch for the Trigicon. RMR. This is a good optic, especially the Type 2. The Type 1, if you get the old Type this is a Type 1, this is a Type 2. They look very similar. However, the Type 1 had problems in the connectivity. It would flicker in and out, which was really obnoxious. There's a uh, way to fix this, and I did this with this, uh, or with this one, even before I read their instructions. I took it off, and then there's little battery contacts that pop out, and if you just bend that up a little bit so it has better pressure with the battery, you're good to go. And then I cut like a little cardboard circle that went underneath the battery, and it helped push it up against and it never has flickered again in a, in a very long time. So that one's working real well. The Type 2 solved that problem. So you get a Type 2, you're not going to deal with that. And these things are real tough. I mean, you know, I've, I've had buddies torture test them where they're like banging stuff with a hammer and the things aren't losing zero. And anyway, that's really more pros and cons. They're tough, hardy optics. Yay, three cheers for Trigicon. Way to go. Another uh, real good one is the Leupold Delta Point Pro. That's a good one. Uh, so uh, then there's a bunch of others like the Vortex, uh, which I haven't personally demoed, so I won't say anything off. There's also SIG, which other people swear by and says it's really good. So it probably is like the Vortex is probably good. And then Aimpoint has a new one out as well. It's differentiated between these because it has an, in, it's an enclosed unit. Uh, so some of the cons based on this isn't going to be there with the aim point. The aim point is going to be a little bit bulkier, but I haven't personally tested it, so I won't say anything to it yet, but I bet that's a hardy, real good optic uh, to go for. So aim point, you could also mount like an aim point T1 on there, and then it's like indestructible. It's going to be awesome. It is a big, you know, it is a bigger, bulkier thing. If you're wearing appendix, you don't really notice it much. It is a little bit extra weight, but uh, anyway, Trigicar and RMR is where I'm going. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I mentioned those. There's other optics as well. I've seen some of the cheaper brands. There is going to be a certain degree of you get what you pay for. So if you find something really cheap and you're like, wow, I got this optic on my pistol for $20. I'm like, yeah, you just trashed 20 bucks that's gonna that thing's gonna suck bro so uh haha -ha, jokes on you no not really but um yeah you get what you pay for on it so uh anyway i wouldn't recommend that uh hey uh so that's uh the uh red dot video but i gotta do a, a little bit of a public service announcement guys uh so this is our warrior poet hat it's awesome but these are the little hat pens it's just pens on our website you push through there and then you bend the pen down on this so it stays seated i was bringing this up to say do not buy these we're having problems with this We'd originally, uh, we'd originally uh, put these on hats and allowed these available to the public because they were going to impre <laughs> I'm already laughing. because they were going to increase your sex appeal uh, by something like three or five percent. But what's happened is it just makes it goes off the chart. So we're having guys who put these on their hats, having like droves of women chase them down the streets. Flocks of women are going after them because this is doing something like 100, 200 percent elevation in your sex appeal. 
And so, I mean, testosterone levels are, are just, uh, you know, going off through the charts. We've had guys that their vasectomies have been reversed because of so much text testosterone infused by these little hat pins. And so you wouldn't think it was that much, but be careful with these. Don't, don't buy them. Don't mount them on your hats. So uh, anyway, uh, I just had to give you that one. It's so stupid. <laughs> Sales is funny. Um, anyway, guys, uh, thanks for tuning in. Train hard, train smart, and I hope I help somebody with, uh, with this. Uh, later, guys.